Here we have the Fresenius Carby Agelia SP syringe pump. It's from the same range as the injector mat and works off the same platform, just slightly newer. Pumps should be, should be used for all infusions five minutes or longer. Regular maintenance is undertaken and the due date will be indicated by a sticker on the side. The infusion device has a strong outer shell if it is knocked or dropped in any way, you may not see any external damage. However, we recommend you still send it off to your engineering team so everything can be checked. And I think blue is a touch point and is movable. When the device is plugged in, the battery indicator will light green and the battery will flash as it's charging or remain a solid green light when fully charged. The pump should always be plugged in. This does not damage the battery or the battery life in any way. Each pump weighs two kilos and the carry handle can be used to stack the pumps together. On the bottom of each device, you will find an indentation. This indentation can be used to lock the pumps together and you just twist to lock in place. As each device weighs two kilos, we only recommend you stack or carry two at a time. On the back, you'll find the swing lock clamp. Push down to release for IV stands. Push down to lift back up. This position is recommended for storage. At the point where it's flat to the pump, you can also spin around, push down and release for bedside or ambulatory pole carrying. You'll also find a communication port speaker, three pin charging point, and infrared sensor. The infrared sensor is used on ITU and HDU units for the link systems. On the front, the soft keys go as follows. On, off, bolus, increment keys, decrement keys, green is go, confirm, start, red is for stop, C stands for cancel, change, menu, shortcut to line pressures, and silence. The pump will show a pictogram to aid in the insertion of syringe. Just release the barrel clasp and take the plunger to the end. Line up your syringe wings with the grey cradle and insert. Lift the barrel clasp to secure you'll notice this has stopped flashing. Then, pinch at the end and move the plunger to the end of the syringe, secure in place. Then you need to confirm the syringe brand and size. The pump will take from 50 mil down to five mil syringe sizes. The drug library is made by clinicians and pharmacy using dose error reduction software. You will find when using drugs in the library that there are a set of parameters for you to work within. For example, insulin. There are soft limits when the pump will indicate you are running at a high rate and max limits that you cannot run beyond. The drug library must be used when possible. If the drug you are administering is not there, then you can use Drug X. Drug X is a mils per hour setting and will always be found at the top of the menu. On the home page, there'll be a syringe when working in Drug X or a lighthouse when working within the drug library, Wi Fi symbol, battery indicator, and a pressure gauge. The pressure gauge works much like a speedometer. If your pressures increase, the dial will move. To set your infusion rate, use your increment and or decrement keys. Double arrows will take you in whole numbers, the single arrow in decimal points. Press start to confirm your rate. If you wish to titrate your rate, you just use your arrow keys without having to stop the pump first. Just always confirm the new rate. 
when infusing, green lights will travel along this bottom bar. The speed the green lights travel is representative of the speed of the pump. The faster the rate, the faster the green lights will travel. Pressing the red key will stop the infusion as indicated by no lights moving. If you are stopped for two minutes or longer, the pump will alarm at you. If you wish to avoid this, go to your menu, find your sand timer symbol and you can pause the pump. Use your double arrows to pause for hours or your single for minutes. Press confirm. You do not wish the for the pump to start before you are back, so press green again. Now the pump is paused for 10 minutes and will not alarm during this time. At the end of this 10 minutes, there'll be an alarm to check if you want to restart your infusion or if you are ready beforehand and wish to override the pause, you just press stop and restart your infusion. You can find many other features in the menu. The menu works on a wheel system. Whether you go up or down, you will always end up in the same place. When you're not plugged into the wall, the first page will always be the battery life. There is up to 15 hours battery life in the SP, however, it is always rate dependent. You will also find in the menu volume infused, syringe, day and night mode, program bolus, alarm volumes, graphs on your flow rate history and pressure history, information only on your drug library, the profile you're working in, pressures, volume limit. In the menu, you can find keypad lock. It's your padlock symbol to the side here. Press enter and then press your soft key underneath the key here until the padlock is shown as locked. Confirm. This means no rate changes can be made to the pump. You could stop the pump if there was an emergency. To unlock, go back to your menu, to your keypad lock function, enter, press under the key again till it shows unlocked and confirm. For an event log, go to your menu, scroll until you see the graph symbol on the side. The event log will show you all basic input into the pump. For example, times of changes and rates. To find your line pressures, you can use the shortcut key here. At the top, you'll see the default limit, underneath the actual line pressure running, and then a box here, tick DPS. DPS stands for Dynamic Pressure System. There are two methods to bolus your drug. You do not have to stop the infusion to bring in either. Press your bolus key once, and both options are shown here. First is manual bolus. Press and hold the bolus key as instructed on the screen. As long as you are holding the key, you are delivering a bolus. To stop the bolus, just release. The pump will then go back to your original infusion rate. The second method is program bolus. You press your bolus key once and press the soft key under PROG. Here you can enter the volume of the bolus you want to give and how long you wish to give it over. The fastest the SP can go is 1200 mils per hour. Press OK to confirm and again press your green button to start. You can stop the bolus at any point or if you let it run through, again you will go back to your original infusion rate. Your alarms are indicated mostly by the light panel at the bottom. They work on a traffic light system. Think of green as go and you're infusing successfully. 
Then you can get amber lights. Amber lights indicate a pre-alarm or something is about to change in your pump. They are indicated by two amber lights on either side, but as you can see, your green lights are still running, indicating you are still infusing. Silence and a banner will show your alarm indicator at the top. There are three types of amber alarm. Near end of infusion, 30 minutes of battery life remaining, or your pressure has increased to within 50 millimeters of mercury of your upper pressure limit. Red alarms are shown as such. This is something urgent and needs your attention immediately. This is your standard giving set. Remember to roll down the orange roller clamp. Spike your bag, fill the chamber to the line indicated. Then you can release the orange roller clamp and slowly prime your line. Further down the line, you'll find green and blue color coding. But the blue bit here is slightly more than just color coding for insertion of the line. This is your anti-free flow device. It'll be open as such when you get it out of the packaging to allow you to prime the line. However, as soon as this clamp is popped into the device, the device takes control and if the door is then opened again, it'll be clamped off, meaning you have peace of mind that the fluid or drug will not run into your patient or onto the floor. To insert the line, lift the blue lever and bring your door forward. It goes green to green, blue to blue. So bring the green in from the outside of the device. You want your circular hinge pointing upwards. Insert the anti-free flow device. Make sure your line is tucked in nicely to the side. Lift the door and you might feel like you've got it wrong. You absolutely haven't, just bring the lever down. After your initial checks and you've selected that you're working within the drug library, an occlusivity check will happen. This is checking that the line is primed and inserted correctly. If you get sad faces for any reason, the pump will indicate you towards the solution. The home screen on the VP looks slightly different to that on the syringe pump. You still have your drug X at the top, Wi-Fi symbol and battery symbol. However, there are now three elements to setting up your infusion. First, you have your volume. Just press your double increment keys and eventually you'll notice that it goes up in bag sizes. Press green to confirm. Next, you set up how long you want to give the infusion over. Use your double arrows for hours and single for minutes. Press green to confirm. As you'll notice, as you changed your time, your rate adjusted. Vice versa, if you change your rate, your time will also adjust. Press green to confirm you are happy with your rate and then once again to start your infusion. Drips along the side will indicate you're infusing and your volume infused is down the bottom here. Green lights are running at a speed that represents the speed of the infusion. To stop the infusion, you press stop, but you'll have to reconfirm all of your settings to restart again. As with the SP, you'll find most of your additional functions in the menu. This is where you'll find your battery life, volume infused, pause function, change drug, day and night mode, program bolus, some other programming features, alarm volume, callback alert, your graphs, event log, information, and your pressures page. Volume to be infused, keypad lock. Again, you have the shortcut to your pressures page with the button on the side. Once again, there are two ways of bolusing your drug on the volumetric pump. Press your bolus key once and both options will be indicated at the bottom. First is manual bolus. If you press your green key, do as the pump indicates and press and hold your bolus button. As long as you are holding, you are delivering the bolus. Once you release the key, the bolus stops. 
and returns to your original rate you're running at. To program bolus, you press your bolus key once, press the soft key under PROG. Here you can enter how much of a bolus you wish to give and how long you wish to give it over. The fastest this pump can run is 1500 mils an hour. Press green to start. Once your bolus has run through, you'll go back to your original rate. Once again, your alarms work on a traffic light system. Green means go, you're running successfully. The amber lights are a pre-alarm. This means something's about to change in your pump. They are indicated by two amber lights on either side of the panel. However, you still have your green lights, therefore you're still infusing. A banner at the top will indicate the type of alarm. There are three types of amber alarm. Near end of infusion, 30 minutes of battery life remaining, and when you are 15 millimeters of mercury away from your upper pressure limit. Finally, there are red alarms. These are alarms that need your urgent attention. Again, the pump will indicate with a banner what type of alarm you're experiencing. It will also wait for you to confirm that the alarm has been resolved before you can restart your pump. Thank you.